Here we go. It's the Wire to Wire podcast. It's your host, Yusuf and Jordan. How you doing, What's good? bro? I'm good, man. Can't complain. You know, it's a bit chilly outside. Uh, I didn't appreciate that. Um, and, you know, it's we had a lot of rain on the weekend, so that's not the greatest. But, hey, summer is around the corner. You know, we're a week out from the official start of summer, so hopefully things turn around. Yeah, I never, I've never seen a June this gloomy, bro. It's kind of crazy to me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and, and May, May had a lot of showers, too, to be honest. You know what they say, right? Uh, April showers, May flowers. We ain't got no flowers yet. Hopefully, Yeah, one I day know. we'll get a flower, right? <laughs> yeah. Double But entendre. no. <laughs> There's been a lot of those so far the past couple of months, bro. But, you know, to kind of kick this episode off and get things started, we did an episode together, you know, kind of giving our predictions of the um, of the NBA finals between Dallas and Boston. Mm -hmm. So I predicted Dallas in seven. Yeah. You said Boston in six. Yeah, you got some time, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> So we things got could so. change. Things could definitely change. I mean, Celtics were up 2-0 against the Warriors, correct? Yeah. In the finals last time. So, So far, we're two games in. You know, we'll see mm -hmm. how many games are left, obviously, of the series. But what yeah. what is your early analysis? What do you make of it so far with what you've seen? Um, Drew Holiday, <laughs> Drew Holiday is really one of those guys that's really standing out and being a difference maker and an X factor, uh, in this whole series. Um, so far, I can't say the whole series, but in the two games, right? Um, game one, Drew Holiday doing it on both sides of the ball, um, rebounding, scoring, making big shots, guarding Luca, uh, helping out with Kyrie as well. Um, leading to Kyrie having not the most effective game. Um, Luca's still going off, of course. Um, but Drew Holiday having a 29 point game in game two, like when, uh, Tatum is struggling, he's able to step up and be that, like, number one or two guy for this, for the Celtics. Um, and, and like, like I said, I guess with my prediction, it's just this team is just very well rounded. Um, And they just have a lot of talent, right? Like, they don't really need much from the bench, even though uh, they have role players that can come in and just bring energy or whatever the case may be. But really and truly, Drew Holiday, um, as a veteran, being there before, winning before, um, it's just he's really making a difference there and making his mark on this finals for sure. And um, Przingis as well in game one has been a – well, they had a huge – was a huge factor um for protecting the rim so that's my early analysis so far what about you Yeah, so when I predicted Dallas in seven, you know, I kind of factored in that, you know, there might be some momentum on Boston's side, you know, especially on their home court. But I think eventually Dallas would be able to pick it up. But I don't know. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick to my guns, obviously. mm-hmm Right. I said Dallas in seven. I'm going to stand on business. I'm going to stand on what I said. But I mean, the way Boston has been playing, it's been very dominant. to be honest, and they're not even really playing their best, especially in game two. Like, game two, that wasn't the best showing that they had, but they still managed to get out a win, right? And, you know, I thought about these parallels, like, you know, back in 2022, they went down 2-0, right? And then Gloria still managed to, you know, win the series, but the thing is, I think it's, something feels different this time around, because The Warriors were a championship team with experience and they had that pedigree, right? Mm -hmm. And then there was no Drew Holiday. You're right. So may, that to me makes me a little bit shaky in my pick, but like I said, I'm standing by it, Yeah. right? But the thing with Dallas and what I want to see Dallas improve on is, you know, Kyrie has to kind of get it going. Mm -hmm. But I think what Luka is doing And he's getting his numbers. He's putting up great numbers. But I think Yeah. he needs to do less. Yeah. Right? Because I think he's trying to take – he's just excited. Like, okay, we're at the finals. It's time for me. I'm the best player on the court. It's time for me to elevate my game and will us to victory, right? Right. But you don't really need to be doing that. You kind of got to, you know, delegate and defer to your teammates and let them start cooking too, right? Right.
And I think it was even like Kobe said it too. I remember a few years ago, Kobe was kind of giving advice that, you know, sometimes like being the star player, it's not just about passing to guys and getting the assists. It's about actually deferring to them and trusting them in those moments. And I Yeah. think once, if he can figure that part out and he can just kind of let loose and let go, I think we'll start to see more productivity from the other guys. So you're saying almost if Luca kind of takes a page out of Tatum's book, even though Tatum hasn't been shooting the greatest, he's still getting his team involved, right? Yes. His, his assist numbers are high. He has high rebound numbers, but he's trying to ensure that his players have the hot hand. Like he's ensuring that a guy like Drew Holiday could go for a 29, Jalen can get his 20, Derek White. I mean, Derek White can get his 15, and then Porzingis is involved as well. So, like, that's why you're seeing a Celtics team effort um, is just overpowering Dallas, right? But I don't know. <clears throat> like, if I could point a finger at anyone on the Dallas Mavericks, yeah, I mean, I guess it would have to be Luka, right? Because he's the guy. So, <clears throat> as much as he is getting up his numbers, Right, and he's scoring like he had twenty three in the first or something like that. Um, it's almost similar to a regular season game, right, where he would get his regardless. But is it is it resulting in wins, right? And that's And, and it's and it's not right. So, um, at the end of the day, Kyrie definitely has to step up. Like Kyrie can't be um, averaging less than twenty. Like that's not what we expected. We expected a uh, LeBron Kyrie type performance. Um, from Kyrie and Luca, where they're almost going forty for forty, right? Every game, um, and that's what they're gonna have to tap into, really and truly. They're gonna have to tap tap into that LeBron Kyrie type of level of play, um, to beat a team like Boston, right? And that just hasn't come from them yet, right? We're not seeing that same type of Kyrie, and we're also 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 not seeing that same type of Luca in that LeBron role, right? LeBron in that role for the Cavs against the Warriors, a team that was better overall, um, we saw LeBron do everything, right? Defensively, um, passing, everything, right? And he willed his team to win. And that's what Luka's going to have to do. Um, like Again, I like, I like my pick of Celtics in six. Um, but again, I'm just hoping the Mavs can get some wins in, right? Or it might not get to six. Yeah. Right, so game three will be big for sure. Um, yeah, and I, well, how do you feel about the coaching matchup so far, uh, Jason Kidd, Kidd and uh, and Joe Missoula? To be honest, I actually, I actually like it because Mm-hmm. these guys are both basketball minds, right? Like Jason Kidd is one of the highest IQ players that I've ever seen play in my life, right? And Joe Missoula, he's showing that he's someone that he's very cerebral in how he approaches it. And he knows how to, he has very good rotations and he knows how to get the most out of his guys. Right. And I remember like when Yudoka left, it's like, this guy has some pretty big shoes to fill, but he's got him back in the finals. Mm -hmm. They're in the exact same position that Yudoka had him in. Right. So now it's just a matter of, do you have the ability as a coach now to get the team over the hump and lead them to a championship or guide them to the championship? Or are you going to kind of go the Udoka way and, you know, lose the series, right? Right. But even from a coaching standpoint, yeah, it's a very, they're, they're good coaches. I like them. I, I think, I think especially Jason Kidd, I think what he needs to do uh, with Luke is he needs to kind of, You know, pull him aside and talk to him and say, like, you know, right now you don't need to be doing more. Yeah. Because, and especially you mentioned, like, with LeBron, right? Yeah. I think sometimes that he was doing way too much, especially in that 2017 NBA Finals when he averaged a triple-double. Yeah. If you look at that team, that team was stacked. It was loaded. Yeah. And if you match it up against that Warriors team, it was mano y mano. But the problem is he was just aiming for getting his stats. Yeah. So he just wanted to average a triple-double. And then that literally kind of took the life out of the rest of the guys on the team, right? Sure.
And if you look, that's when Kyrie said, okay, yo, uh, he were, he demanded a trade out of, out of Cleveland because mm -hmm. he, he saw what was going on, right? I don't think Luka is doing that intentionally. I think he just, it's his first finals. He's really excited. He just wants to win. But he needs to kind of, I think, taper it back a little bit because you can get buckets regardless. Yeah. Like you've seen, like, you have the skill, you have the ability to get to your spot and get buckets. But can you take a step back, defer, and let other guys start cooking and letting them contribute the best way that they know how? Because up until this point, you guys were doing something that worked. So why deviate from it now and try to play hero ball? If you do that, you're going to play right into Boston's hands because, like you said, they have different guys contributing in different ways, and they're each leading the team to, to win. Yeah. So if you're just going to go there, play isolation basketball, and just try to get buckets and get your numbers, you're going to play right into their hands. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think you should – really do some reflecting. I think Jason Kidd should also pull him aside and really implore him, like, hey, listen, you got to change the approach a little bit. Yeah. And I feel like they all, like Jason Kidd kind of has to take on a, 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 find a tough guy, right? Find someone to muck up things, right? Because right now uh, it's, it's Jalen Brown and it's, it's Drew Holiday. It's those guys that are like, like showing their dominance and, and and showing their strength and athleticism, and they don't have anyone to match that, right? Kyrie's not that guy. Luca's not that guy because he's always going to be complaining and he's he's quite injury prone, right? Mm -hmm. And he's almost already a, a bit knocked up um, going into game two. He's questionable, right? So mm -hmm. he can't be that guy. Now it's it's I don't trust anyone else on Dallas to do that, right? We saw PJ Washington in that. Um, in the T Wolves uh, series, he tried to be that enforcer type guy, right, and mm. and, and try to like get on the nerves of uh, Anthony Edwards and other players like that. Um, but I just don't, I just don't think there's a guy in this moment that could do it, right? Gafford, PJ, like Kleber, like they don't have enough depth really that could be there and enforce, right? There's no. Drew Holiday, there's no Derek White. Like that's that's the the thing in this series. Like Tatum and Brown can struggle, and Celtics can find a way to still win through the play of a Derek White and a Drew Holiday, right? So that's what makes it very tough, right? And then I'm not even mentioning Przingis, but I feel like Przingis may s slowly slow down um, as the series progresses because I think that calf is is eventually going to add up in terms of the pain tolerance. And we're going to slowly see his minutes diminish. But you still have Al Horford, a vet, could do what he needs to do. Rebounding, toughness, that three-point in the corner. Like, he can still offer something. Like, he's not a liability. So, again, game three will will tell this whole series in terms of who wins that game, right? Mm -hmm. Being up 3-0. Um, there won't be a way back, I don't think. Um, but again, uh, something needs to change. It's they're gonna have to have a miraculous performance in Game Three. It's gonna have to be one of those where Luca's going for maybe, like you said, he takes your advice and he, he it's a game where he has like twenty five, and he has fifteen assists, right? And he's he's doing the rebounding and doing all the extra stuff, and then he lets a guy like Kyrie go for like. 40 and PJ has like 20 and I don't know who else the scoring comes from on, on Dallas, but that's the problem. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how game three plans out. Yeah. Uh, you see, I'm alert, but I'm not worried. Right. So to me, game three is going to be a deciding game. Right. Yeah. Because one thing too with Kyrie is that I noticed that he sometimes starts off series slow, but then he really picks it up when it matters most. Right. Mm -hmm. So he did that in 2016. Right. Yeah. He kind of started off the first, about first two, three games. He was, you know, he was just kind of going with the motions, but yeah. then he just hit a switch and then he just yeah. became dominant. Right. And he's the one that secured that championship for them in 2016, right? So, right, because they were down three one, right? In that series, they were, yeah, yeah. And then literally, like, 
he elevated his play, right? And then where he went, the team went, right? Yeah. Because, I mean, LeBron was stop padding the whole series. He still went down 3-1. But when Kyrie mm-hmm. elevated his play, it resulted in wins. So there is yeah. something there, right? Yeah. So I think I have to see how he does how he does in game three. If this if they lose game three, then yeah, I think Boston wins in a sweep. Yeah. Maybe in five games at most. Mm-hmm. But if Dallas wins game three, then I'm gonna feel very confident about my my seven games, right? Pick, right? Yeah, I, I, I feel like we see a, a three one scenario. That's what I think. Um it's possibly it's gonna be um they split in Dallas where Dallas wins game three and then Celtics win game four and then they go back to Boston and then Maps is gonna have to win that game. Um that's where it, it gets interesting for me. Like that's how I kind of see it. I see it. They split in Dallas, go back home. Dallas possibly wins that game in Boston, and then we're back in Dallas for game six, and then we'll see one of us will be right. <laughs> and yeah. one thing I Notice about Dallas, like throughout their playoff run, is many, many times they were like coming back from behind for victories, right? Mm-hmm. So that's not a habit you want to get into. That's not a yeah. winning habit, at least, right? Like it's good that if you're it's good if you're capable to come back and win, but it's not something that you wanna rely on, especially with a championship on the line, right? So I think game three, they gotta come out swinging, they gotta come out firing. Yeah. And then they got to, because obviously, you know, whenever teams go out to big leads, they start, they kind of start to take their foot off the gas. The other team gets back into the game. So they need to mm-hmm. come out swinging, focus on the defensive end, you know, try to make them work for it. You're not going to stop these guys from scoring necessarily, but you can make them work for yeah. it. Right? And then you try to squeeze out a win and then, you know, you, you live to see another day. Right. But they're kind of the margin for error for them is very is very low like there's no margin for error really mm-hmm. so yeah. and yeah like you said i don't think that approach of um trying to have fourth quarter heroics uh is going to work with the celtic scheme because i feel like they're going to clamp down and they're going to make it tough for them to score so when they miss on their end Celtics are to come back and then it's either tatum Jalen brown drew Derek white like they're going to get a good shot Right, and that goes if that falls, then they're in trouble, right? Yeah, and bro, I'm just watching the series, and I'm just like, why did Milwaukee let Drew Holiday go, man? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get Damian Lillard is is a big name, and obviously he has that prestige, he has that status, he has that reputation, right? Mm-hmm. But. I don't know. Drew Holiday's looking like a beast out there, man. Like, yeah, so. Would you take Dame or Drew Holiday? I mean, it's it's a tough one, but you see moments like that, like Drew Holiday didn't do much throughout the regular season, but he was still like an X factor for the Celtics. He played a lot of games. Um, he just did what he had to do as a role player. Then now he's all that preserved energy through the regular season is coming out in the playoffs, right? And we're seeing them take it to another notch or be that second man that he used to be in Milwaukee to Giannis. We're seeing that now on the Celtics team where he's debatably like the second, third best player on the Celtics, right? Yeah, it's interchangeable on any given night. And the thing is with with Dame, it's even throughout the season, he was kind of struggling, right? Mm -hmm. I know he said he, you know, he's had a lot of off-court stuff. He wasn't living with his family, yeah. whatever yeah. the case may be. And I, I empathize with that. You know, I mean, he's a human being at the end of the day. Those things can get to you. But in terms of, like, the productivity and, you know, he got injured in the first round, obviously. Mm-hmm. But this iteration of Dame and Drew Holiday, I I, I would take Drew Holiday, bro. Yeah, and, and like, the, just the defensive component is huge. Like, yes, all yeah. those threes are nice and all, but like what his impact being able to guard Luca the way he's guarding Luca and then switch off and guard Kyrie. It's like, man, like I need that and I need impact plays. I need those big steals. I need those blocks. I need like those right smart decisions, the right pass, the big three. Like that's more important than just like, you know, that like scoring. 
yeah, I think I I think a guy like Drew Holiday is going to be is going to be like severely missed inside that Milwaukee locker room. Mm -hmm. And I mean, look, you have Dame, you got to you got to try to figure it out and yeah. see what you can make happen, but Drew Holiday is definitely I'm sure he's definitely making them have second thoughts about, <laughs> you know, making that trade happen. Yeah, 100%. Uh I guess we could wrap it up uh in terms of playoff talk but like final finals mvp who do you got so far i mean if boston wins mm -hmm. i'm gonna give a slight edge to uh, jalen brown mm. i think jalen brown will get it um to be honest he just has that look in his eye yeah that yeah just sometimes and yeah. some great players you just see it they just put their head down and they just mm. make plays happen bro and yeah. like they're just whatever it takes. I'm gonna make it happen, and he just has that look in his eye, like he's like he's having one of those moments, and he's in that zone. Yeah, and it's a huge difference from the finals a couple of years ago because you can kind of see that the lights were a little bit too bright for them. Hundred percent. So Golden State's offense and experience was overwhelming, mm -hmm. but now you don't really see that anymore. And like especially in him, I see he's turned that corner. Yeah. So I yeah. would say it's him. What about yeah. you? Uh, it's tough. Um, I I want to say I want to say for holiday, like almost similar to like an Ingo Dallas situation. Um, but again, it all depends, right? Um, right now though, after these two games, I'm giving it to Drew Holiday. Okay. But um, <clears throat> second place for me would be I guess um I'd have to give it to Tatum, just yeah. solely off the fact I know he's not playing well. Uh, in terms of shooting and his field goal percentage, but near triple double in game two, one rebound shy of a triple double, um, and like it, I know it looks it doesn't look good, but I feel like there's one game where he's going to go off, mm -hmm. and then that's gonna tilt it in his favor. Um, Jalen Brown, like it's hard not to argue against it. Um, I guess my sole argument would just be because he won the Eastern Conference um, MVP. They'll just won't give him the finals MVP, but like, because he's not like the best player on his team, but mm -hmm. he looks like the best player on his team. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I agree with you in, in Jalen Brown because like, he definitely seems locked in. Mm -hmm. Like in moments with Tatum, there's a bit of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Like that's why like his field goal, Goal percentage is so down, like he doesn't know whether to pull up, shoot, shoot a three, go to the rim. You know what I mean? He's still indecisive. Um, and that's that you can tell that he's a bit like the lights are a bit bright, but it's still there's a still a confidence where he's just like, I'm still gonna do whatever I want on the floor. Yeah. Right. And I I'm think, still gonna be involved. Yeah, I think what Tatum is dealing with, to be honest, and this is just me on the outside looking in giving my little, you know, armchair psychology is I think what he's dealing with is that he's kind of at a crossroads where it's like, he doesn't really, he's not really certain on what he wants to do. Right. Because it's like, okay, offensively, my shots are not falling. Right. But at the same time, you know, he wants to prove that he's that guy, but then there's a lot of conversation that he's not really that dude and he's overrated. And I think a part of him is like, okay, I want to shut those people up and prove them wrong. But at the same time, he wants to still focus on the confides of the team and not make it about himself. So I think he's even having like that own internal, like mental battle, like trying to conquer, trying to conquer me. Right. And I think we're kind of seeing that play out, but I will give him credit. I do think he's actually a very high IQ player because the fact that he can recognize, okay, my shot's not falling, right? I can't, I'm having a hard time getting it going offensively, but he's still doing the right things. So he's still making the right pass. He's focusing on yeah. other parts of the game that he can still impact, yeah. right? But it's just obviously the fans want him to score. He's known to be a scorer. Exactly. So that's what they want to see more of. Yeah. Like, I think he has the IQ and understanding that it's not there right now. So let me just try to find other ways to be effective and help my team. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I know enough about basketball to understand that 
you can never lean too much on one thing and rely on it. You have to always find different ways to be effective, especially when one thing is not working, right? So like, for example, if your jump shot's not falling, maybe try to get to the rim, right? If you're having a hard time getting to the rim or the rim's not available, then you have to try to find other ways to affect the game, right? So I think he has the IQ to understand that. So I don't really have a problem with how he's playing because I think I understand what he's dealing with and I can respect the way he's approaching it. Yeah. 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 I just think he needs to take some jumpers and it'll be all right. But like similar to last year in that heat series, like he struggled as well. Um, but then he broke out and I think it was game six. So like 51 points. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think he, he has that. No, it was, it was a six years game seven. I think when he had um that game seven game, when he had to win it to move on to face the heat in a 51 point game. Like, I think that's, he still has that in him. It's just, there's hasn't been a need for him to do it. Like, cause everyone else is doing so well. Like Derek White's hitting shots, Jalen Brown, you can give him the ball and like, he'll go downhill and, and get an easy bucket. Um, and he's shooting 55% from the field. Like, and, and and Drew shooting well from the field too, so it's like, why am I if I'm not shooting well? Why am I gonna just take all these shots mm -hmm. and miss when I, all these guys have a, a hot hand, right? And I feel like the Celtics team has the understanding of that, and their team dynamic to get everyone involved and spread the ball around is why it's it's very tough to to beat this team. Yeah, this is gonna be like I said in the last episode. You know, it's gonna be a good series to watch. So game three. I think will be a very pivotal game. Yeah. Right? And, yeah, we'll see how the game plays out. But I'm standing on what I said. I said Mavs in seven. I'm going to stand on it. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. So be it. It is what it is. But I'm standing on I'm standing on what I said. Yeah, I got Drew. MV Finals MVP. And I got Celtics in six.